Hello friends, welcome back to our Scripture Union Value Series on Moral Purity. I hope you are super well. My name is Uncle Paul. And it's Lina again and we would like to say thank you so much for joining us today in our last episode. Now, for the past five weeks, we have studied purity and mainly focused on sexual purity. Right, the value of purity gives you and I direction in your relationships particularly keeping yourself pure for your future husband or wife. Well, all of us long to be loved. Some of you have experienced love from your parents or other family members or perhaps from a special friend. Some of you perhaps have not. But even if you have felt the love of others, we know that at times their love fails. We all long for an everlasting and unfailing love. Today, We'll talk about such a love that is available to each one of us. Let's now listen to this beautiful story about a boat to illustrate that kind of love. That's right. Thank you, Antoline. Ben and his parents lived near Lake Victoria, where many kinds of boats passed by. Ben, like any other boy, often wished to own one, but his family could not afford one. So one day, his father gave him an idea. Ben, why don't you make a small boat that you could play with? Our friend, the boat maker down the road, said he could help you. Ben was good at making things and the boat maker was a good teacher. He helped Ben draw a plan for his boat, carefully thinking of the details of the design to make sure it would float. He also helped him find some pieces of wood to use. For the items that had to be purchased, Ben worked for some people and earned the money he needed. Finally, he was ready to begin working on his very own boat. Well, after working on it for months during his spare time, Ben excitedly brought the finished boat at home, well labeled with letter B, to stand for Ben. Just he couldn't wait to show it to his parents. He could hardly contain his excitement. It is done! My very own boat is ready to sail! The boat maker was proud of what Ben made. In fact, everyone who saw his boat was very impressed with his careful and beautiful work. Soon after the boat was finished, his parents and some of Ben's friends went to witness the initial sailing. Carefully, Ben tied a robust string to the back of his boat so that it wouldn't stray. Then he set it in the water. With great pride and joy, he watched his beautiful boat sailing gracefully in the lake. Suddenly, a blast of wind came and snapped the string. To his horror, he saw the boat heading out further into the lake. Ben, his friends, and parents watched helplessly until the little boat couldn't be seen anymore. He couldn't believe it. He lost his precious boat that he had so carefully made. He loved that boat and it was gone. One day, a little while later, Ben noticed a small boat in the window of a shop. He stopped to look and he couldn't believe his eyes. It was his boat, labeled with letter B. He was sure of it. So Ben was so delighted and immediately told his parents, are you sure it is your boat? Asked his father. Oh yes, Ben said, I made it. I know it's mine. How can I get it back now? Ben and his father went to the shop and explained what had happened. Although the shopkeeper believed the story, he told Ben, I cannot give you the boat. The fisherman who brought it in sold it to me. Then I will buy it back, said Ben. The shopkeeper said, I will give you the boat for the same amount I paid the fisherman. Ben loved the boat and he was willing to pay for it. Even if it was really his, he told the shopkeeper 
he did not have the money, but he would work hard to earn the amount needed to buy the boat back. The shopkeeper assured him he wouldn't sell it to anyone else. Ben worked hard finding jobs to do from the neighbors and friends until he finally got the entire amount and he went to buy the boat back. When Ben excitedly brought the boat back, he said, now the boat is twice mine. I made it and then I brought it back again. I made it and then I bought it back again. Let's look at the story from a different point of view. I will review part of our story and you will tell me how it reminds us about God or about us. True. One, Ben planned every detail for his boat and made it very carefully. What does that show about God and, and us? Well, it shows that God loves us, planned our lives and carefully created us. Two, when Ben found his boat in the shop, he immediately recognized it and knew it was his. What does that say about God? God made us each special and unique. He knows us by name. Three, Ben had great joy seeing his boat fulfill its purpose by sailing. In the same way, God has great joy in watching us use the gifts abilities, opportunities he gave us. Four, Ben lovingly tied a cord around the boat to protect it from harm. In the same way, God gave us instructions or commands on how to live safely and wisely. The boat broke away from the cord and went far away. We too have disobeyed God and gone astray from him. Thank you very much. Five, the boat was taken by someone who didn't love it or care about it. He sold the boat for money. In the same way, God's enemy says we belong to him because we have sinned. Satan does not love us or care about us. Six, Ben did everything he could so that he could buy back his precious boat. In the same way, God did everything he could to be able to buy you and I back to himself from Satan. Seven, after Ben bought back the boat, he said it was twice on. He made the boat and he bought the boat. We too, we belong to God because he made us, but then we disobeyed him. When he paid the price of our sin by dying on the cross, he bought us back again. But unlike the boat, we must choose to believe in him and ask him to forgive us. That's right. Let's read what God did to buy us back from sin and Satan. Open your Bibles to John chapter 3, verse 16, a famous verse. John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Who does God love? According to that verse, who does God love? Yes, God loves the world. And the world refers to all of the people in the world, including you and me. Because of God's true love for each of us, what did he do? Right, he gave us his son. What was the purpose for him giving his son? So that whoever believes in him shall not perish. And to perish means to die or to be forever separated from God to be punished for our sins. That's right. So why are we in danger of perishing or being punished forever by God? Because we have sinned. But I am glad Jesus made a way for you and I at the cross 
And in this verse, God makes a promise to us. Do you see that promise? Right, eternal life. All you need is to believe in what he has done. Now, boys and girls, believing in Jesus Christ means believing everything the Bible says about him. Believing in him also means that we repent of our sins, ask his forgiveness, and trust him to help us change and obey him. If you are ready to admit that you have sinned, if you are ready to repent and stop sinning, you can tell God that today. And if you truly believe that Jesus Christ is God's perfect son, who took your punishment, you can put your trust in him today and receive forgiveness and eternal life. Now, I'll give you a few minutes to talk to God quietly in your own words. God will hear you if you truly mean what you are saying. Okay? Now, if you're ready to trust Jesus as your Savior, you are going to repeat this prayer after me. Say, Dear Lord God, Dear Lord God, Thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you that He died on the cross. Thank you that He died on the cross. For my sins. For my sins. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. For all my sins. For all my sins. Please. Please, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, be my Lord, be my Lord, and be my Savior, and be my Savior. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, I will also pray with you because you've been wonderful friends all the way from episode number one. Mm -hmm. Shall we pray together? All right. Now, God, we thank you for all the boys and girls who have been following us right from lesson one. We believe you have taught us so many things. Today, we choose to come to you and ask you that you will use us, set us apart, that our lives, Lord, will bring praise and glory. And Lord, I pray that all these girls and boys who are listening, they will serve your purposes in their generations, oh God. Lord, you will teach them. They will stand out for the truth. They will stand out for what is pure, oh God. And so, in their time, oh God, many will come to know you because you are raising the army that will be used of you, O oh God. So we pray for their parents in a special way, that you'll give them wisdom, strength to raise these boys and girls, O oh God, that in together, Lord Jesus, we will raise a kingdom, families that come to know you, and they are the light and the salt of the world. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. Amen. Lynn and I would like to say thank you so much for sticking around. We have enjoyed this wonderful journey right from the first episode on moral purity. Fast when someone is at the phone. Fast free. God wants you to be holy and completely free from sexual immorality. Chapter 4, fast free. Fast when someone is chapter 4. Show you morality. Chapter 4, verse 3. Yeah. <laughs>